Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Ms. Joanne Colburn, one of our awesome physical therapists here at A Physical Therapy. And, uh, and we're going to talk about the automatic flexion table and why we use this as one of the things in terms of helping people out regarding uh, back issues. But, Joanne? Hi. So, uh, good. so we have Danny, one of our physical therapy techs here, act, act, acting as a patient. And so when a patient comes in with low back pain or leg symptoms related to their low back, which we will figure out on exam, um, I typically have patients lay on their stomach. This is an automatic table, so the legs actually go up and down, right? And one of the things that we do is we line up the pelvis and the lumbar to relieve some of the neural tension that can exist in in the body and also um, relieve any mechanical pain, which is joint pain, when uh, treating the low back. So one of the things I would do for a patient, I'd ask them to lay on their stomach and I, of course, you know, make sure that they're okay with me touching their pelvis and their lumbar and I go ahead and start to assess, right? So for Danny, I'm looking at his right uh, iliac crest here is high, so that's something I would correct. And then his L, one, two, three, and four, and five are elevated on this side. And then when I look at his pelvis, he's got um, the left sacroiliac uh, joint. Looks like it's a little bit lower um, than the right, but we gotta check that on, on the table. So I'm gonna turn this machine on, and what you'll see is that the legs go up and down. So it's a great way to assess for dynamic uh, joint dysfunction. <laughs> versus just static uh, joint dysfunction. So I'm looking on how his pelvis and his lumbar moves in relation to the bed. And from my baseline, which is when he was just laying flat and the bed wasn't moving. And what I find is that his, as I said earlier, in his left innominate, which is on this side, is lower but that's also the side that moves with the leg, so I know that that's the side that's stuck, right? I go ahead and assess for that, and I'll correct that in a minute. And then I also assess for the sacrum. So the reason why these things are important for a patient with back injuries is because, again, we want to restore joint um, function, right? The, I always tell patients that each of the joints need to do their part, so if only one is actually working and the another one isn't, then that's just more strain on the body, and that's part of the reason why they're coming in with uh, back issues. So I, that was part of my assessment. I go ahead and um, stop the machine. During this process, I also ask the patient if they're having an increase in symptoms. Um, the, the whole reason for that is I'm assessing if they're tolerating the treatment. So for Danny, since he has a right, what we call a right upslip, I go ahead and push here, cough three times, Danny. <coughs> and then we always go back and reassess. And so that's one of the ways to correct that joint dysfunction. That basically means the right L5 is stuck on S1. So it's an easy way to correct that joint being stuck is by me pushing and him coughing. And then I had already figured out that the left innominate was the one that was dysfunctional today. We, we assess every single day which side is stuck. And so this side is low. I go ahead and have Danny push into my hand. Go ahead and push. Good, relax. And make sure you're not you're holding your breath. Push again. Good, relax. And one more. Good, relax. And then I go back and reassess. And it's still off, so I go back. <laughs> Push again, Danny. It's just stubborn. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Good, relax. And one more. Good, relax. And are you okay if I push by your tailbone? Okay, so now I'm assessing for his sacrum. So the this is the right and left innominate. And then I come over here and this is the sacrum. I always explain to the patients this is kind of like your upside down triangle in your pelvis, right? And then I ask if I can push by his tailbone, which is at the bottom of the sacrum. Again, it tells me the position of the pelvis. 
So I go ahead and correct it. Um, so what's happening with Danny is that his left side, his left sacroiliac joint was stuck, which means that his right side has to make up for all that motion when he's walking, doing stairs, lifting, anything in that manner. Um, luckily for Danny, he's young, so he will recover a little bit quicker than some of our older patients, right? The younger you are, your body um, is a little bit more resilient to uh, changes in your body versus as we get older, it doesn't like us so much. Um, so when a patient is coming in with any pelvic issues, any lumbar issues, any sciatica, these are things that, that we look at because again, we want less obstruction for those nerves to exit the joints uh, and flow freely into the buttocks and into the legs to reduce any numbness, tingling, or burning. And then again, if the patient is just coming in with low back pain, I still look at the pelvis anyway because that serves as a foundation for your lumbar spine. So I'm just going back and reassessing, and now his pelvis is lined up. So then I go back and go to the lumbar spine. So what I, I always do first is I, I check the pelvis, which is this region, I correct that, and then I go to the lumbar spine. And so statically for Danny, his, his left, um, It, so his left side of his lumbar is actually sitting, when, when, it, when the table is in neutral, it's actually sitting low, but then when the table goes up and down, it, act, it, it, it actually depresses even more. What that tells me is he's actually stuck on the left side. Um, so that's one of the dynamic, if you want to call it assessments, that we look at. So it hadn't changed, which tells me it's stuck, and I just easily correct that by just applying a little overpressure. And again, throughout treatment with patients, the providers are constantly monitoring whether or not they're tolerating this. Um, the upside to these tables is that it provides an opportunity for, because the legs go up and down, it provides opportunity for the lumbar joints to actually gap or space. Like if you, if you look at the segment above and the segment below, what happens when the legs go down, it actually separates a little bit, so it gives the disc a little bit more room, and it also stretches out the muscles, right? Um, but again, not every patient's body tolerates that, so we have to monitor whether or not this is working for them. Uh, I would say a fair amount of patients respond really well to it, but again, we monitor every, every treatment to make sure that it's cooperating. So yeah. That's pretty much the, the gist of the automatic flexion table. And then after I'm done with this, I just go back and reassess to make sure his lumbar spine is in the spot that I want it to. All right, thank you everyone for uh, watching this uh, video regarding the use of automatic flexion table here at A Physical Therapy in Columbia, Howard County, Maryland. And if you want to learn more how we use this uh, automatic flexion table with our awesome physical therapists such as Joanne, just give us a call at 443-979-7171. Again, that's 443-979-7171. Feel free to check out our, our website for other updates and other uh, social media outlets for more information regarding such things. Thank you and have an awesome day. Bye.